right, so this is going to be my playthrough of Back to the Future, the game, part one. Um, sure. Let's see the notifications. Alright, now I've never played this before. This is going to be purely... As it goes, I guess. All right, I'm ready. Are you? Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 1 18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, I need. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, 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 okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. It's a nice abbreviated version of the movie. <laughs> you got that thing hooked up to the... car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me! The car! The car! Where's the phrase? If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Yes! He said it. <laughs> oh, man. Watch this, watch this! Occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Ah, Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ, Doc! You disintegrated Einstein! Calm down, Marty! I didn't disintegrate anything! The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact! Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler! I sent him into the future! One minute into the future, to be exact, and at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! That was kind of uneventful. Uh, Doc? Oh, huh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened, to Einstein? No need for concern, it's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox! This is... unexpected. Notebook, notebook. Got it! Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention! The thing that makes time travel possible! In this notebook, I detail the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic! Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z, and E equals the square root of Z times C squared, and the flux dispersal. Um, Doc, shouldn't we get out of here before the Libyans show up? Uh, Doc? Great. 
Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! Doc! No! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Well, that's quite the change Doc. of events. Marty? Is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Oh. Well, you're safe and sound now. Oh. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. Flux capacitor, fluxing. Quite the Jules Verne collection he has there. It's an interesting looking game. That's for sure. How is he gonna turn this this speaker up all the way to? Break it. Then he's gonna get the call saying not to use it. Dad! Are we too late to stop the sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's dark stuff. The city has no right now, to- Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and- Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. <laughs> At least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... Remembering. Hey, let me- Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. Sorry, Marty. Doc built this model at Downtown Hill Valley, way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Come on, I saw it first. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I picked it up first. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to- Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! Ah! No. Hey, Biff. Uh, 
I'll pay you for it. How much? Um, Not enough. I'll pay you for it. How much? Um, Not enough. What? <laughs> it's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. And then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. Time to get over it and move on. What a jerk. That notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? Just dumb. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. Oh, whoops. Ah, uh, never mind. Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. <laughs> That's the way to Feels go about like it. That was a lifetime ago. Actually, I guess it was. Doc must have whipped up some crazy compounds in that cauldron. <laughs> well, that smells like beef stew. Jukebox. Where did I see jukebox? Let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. You got it, Mr. McFly. Oh, no. Hey, Dad, wh why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Photo of George? Let's make some noise. Oh yeah. Whoa. Gotta go... Gotta... All the way up. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. Use it. Use. It took me forever to repair it's like this the, thing after the I dark blew it out side. last time, and now some jerks you gonna pick it up You don't want to pennies. use it, but it feels so good. Oh yeah. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> Hey, look! It's Chuck Butthead! Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff, I think that's Marty's guitar. Oh, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> You're right, Mr. McFly. Here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. And now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Biff, I thought I told you not to take my son's guitar. Oh, right. Sure thing, Mr. McFly. I was just warming them up for you, Marty. Let's see what you got. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. What a butthead. Hey, Dad. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? 
Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! Why is Biff even here? I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know- Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son, I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That that's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. That looks familiar. Back on, Biff. Oh, shoot. Yes. I got the notebook. Ah, Doc, where are you? It's... 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 The DeLorean! <gasps> Doc? I'd probably freak out too. Einstein! Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? How did the dog get back, but not... Doc. Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program the time machine to jump to these four dimensions. 
physical coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past. Or oh, was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark, last time departed. Good luck. Right, right, last time departed, last time departed, huh? Oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? Nah, that sucks. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Once I know when to look for Doc. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? That was useless. What do you know about this, Shuiny? Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Since when does Marty say Great Scott? Gotta be one of the most unusual things ever. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? I guess there's time for a quick game. Oh, yeah. So they're not even gonna let me play it? He's just gonna lose and walk out? That's okay, dumb. Now I'm ready. Liquor store door? I don't think Marty's old enough for a liquor store. Let's find out. I ah. see you sneaking into that liquor store, young man! Rude. Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Get along now! Scat! Hooligans? Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. The shoe. A shoe? Now, what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Stay there! Oh, hello. Sorry, Einstein. You heard the lady. Well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Hmm, 
much better. So he just drops it and wins like that. Yeah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I. All I've got is tea and candy. But I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh, Have a seat, Sonny. Can't get a word in edgewise. Hey! You kids! Put out those cigarettes! <laughs> oh, the candy looks older than I am. Man, she keeps it hot in here. the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. Uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Man, these are powerful. I could see Biff going into the video store. Yeah, he wouldn't believe the filth that boy watches. Yeah, he's nothing but an out of control hedonist, just like his father. He's a hooligan. There's a clue to find a dock out there. I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. Surely the water's boiling by now. She didn't even turn the stove on. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. <sighs> when was it? 1600s. Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy <laughs> burned down. A speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. Ah. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe things about history. Mr. Strickland? Slackers. The video store! Huh? The 
speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on the lower things. Is that... Chip! Tannin! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! <laughs> I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally! Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. <laughs> I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what they said like a hundred years ago? Well, obviously, the day after the speakeasy burned down. What a hag. Let me keep you from your business. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch those. My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. <laughs> hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. Oh, your puns. Just too good. There's the whistle. Surely the water's boiling by now. The stove still isn't on. Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order. Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Help! Police! I'M BEING ATTACKED BY HOOLIGANS! <laughs> Them hooligans. Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? It's... A uh, costume. Uh, tonight's the big uh, Halloween party. Halloween party? It's like in June. May? May. There you go. Never mind. You don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You barely know I was gone. Ready to go, Einstein? Time circuits? Ah, flux capacitor. Uh, fluxy. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. 
I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Just ready for the trip. Oh, yes. Quite the car. Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Man, excuse me, young man. Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh. There's got to be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. You can mark me down as a supporter. The young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. It's quite you have the a message diction. for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets, no doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery. Yeah, tell them, go ahead, make my day. Make your day what? Never mind, I'll play around with it and see if I can come up with something better. Mr. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Sonny Crockett. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Crockett. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. <gasps> Saw that one coming from a mile I mean, away. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! 
I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc, I gotta find Doc.